So some people think the tight end room may be one of the more talent-laden spots on this on this offense. Kind of assess your your room and and sort of the array of, of talent that you've got. Yeah, I do think we're talented. Um, obviously, they did a good job recruiting um, in the past years here, so we have some some talented guys, some young guys that that have grown um, this past you know semester with us through the spring, through the summer uh, that we expect big things from. Um, and then you know you got the older guys, Paul and, and Garrett, that you know, played a lot of football. Um, that we expect you know those guys to uh, to do some big things for us too. But if you look at the room, man, they're all athletic. Um, obviously, there's there's different different skill sets to each. Uh, I think each of them brings something of value that you know the other one may may lack. But at the same time, um, they all kind of fit what we want to do you know schematically. And that's you know in that position in my room, you got to learn how to play. Um, you know, the, the hit H back position as well as the slot receiver as well as the inline tight end. So mm. you got to be versatile and uh, and you got to create separ separation in the, in the pass game um, just because, you know, that's kind of who we are. We, have to, we like to spread it around, throw it around the yard. So, you know, for us to be, you know, a valuable position, we got to create separation and, and, and be able to make, you know, explosive plays in the pass game. How much are you kind of easing Garrett and this stuff where you know he's got to be ready to go at the start of the season, but you don't want to overdo it too soon? Yeah, it's just a, Following the protocol um, of what the you know the doctors and our trainers and, and our head coaches set for him, um, we do as many walkthroughs as possible. We watch as much film as possible just to try to, to take mental reps. Um, and then you know obviously you know, with, with the different techniques that we use here versus you know what he's used in the past, and, and um, just trying to, trying to get as many reps as I can without you know moving him too fast. And uh, and, and like I said, and just following the process because I know he's worked extremely hard. I know he wants to be out there right now. Um, I know he's frustrated that you know he wants to play, but you know he's worked really hard, and, and I think once it you know once he's cleared fully, mm -hmm. I think you'll see the you know I don't want to cash checks that I can't you know or, or write checks I can't cash, but I think you know he's he's exactly where he needs to be, and, and, and he'll be ready to play. Rotation wise, how many of these guys are going to be in the rotation on game days? Yeah, it's kind of up to. Kind of up to up, up in the air right now. You know, we'll just see. You know, where we're at as a team, where we're at as an offense, and, and, and what type of value that brings. You know, week in and week out. You know, does a 12 personnel set um, create some create mismatches? Um, are we better when we when we're in a, when we're in 11 versus or 10? You know, it's just it's just one of those things where it's kind of gonna be week by week, and and honestly, how we're playing at the time. You know, if we're playing at a high level, then yeah, let's throw them out there. Let's let's do some things. But if, you know, if we're not bringing value, then you know, we got to adjust and, and, and do what's best for the football team. You talk a little bit about Max Clare. I know there's a lot of excitement about him. And then and Drew Bibber, maybe the roles they can play this year and their skills, too. So both of those guys are exactly what I look for in, a, in, a, in our tight end position from a schematic standpoint. Like like I said earlier, they got to be able to play in the slot, right? They got to be able to run and create separation just like as TJ would. And you got to understand, TJ is a, a lot more dynamic mm -hmm. than a 245 pounder. But at the same time, Max and Drew both have those skill set to where they do have some explosiveness to them. They do have some twitch. So if you were to match a linebacker on those guys and play man to man, um, we, you know, we expect to, to win on those matchups. So um, I think those guys bring value in the pass game a lot. And now it's just, you know, um, applying pressure and it's emergency in the run game to make sure those guys are the total package. You think you'll have played two tight ends at the same time, have some two tight end sets? Oh yeah. That's kind, of, kind of going back to my the earlier uh, earlier question is is if, if twelve personnel brings the best value that week and we, we're playing at a high level, then that's something of value, right? That's something that we need to get in and, 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 and go attack. Uh, but at the same time we gotta we gotta continue to show it day in and day out and 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 provide ourselves with you know the best value that we could possibly bring. You got the freshman George. Um, I know it's early but it seems hard to think He'll find many reps with all this, these guys in front of him. Is a red shirt most likely the future for him? No, I don't. I don't. I don't like to say, "Hey, this guy's gonna red shirt," because you just never know. Um, he has, you know, he has a long ways to go. But he is, he's very athletic. He's very long, and he's very fast. And so there might be, you know, there might be a spot this year that he can help us, um, whether it be on special teams or whether it be, you know, at the slot receiver, whether it be, you know, outside receiver. Who knows? You know, I think. Uh, I do think you know George has a, has a lot of potential, and I know that's a dangerous word. You know, I think he's got a lot of work to do to to, to, to get to where he wants to be um, and where we want him to be. Um, but we've been really really pleased with what we've seen so far out of camp. Just the just the athletic ability, um, the explosiveness, and, and, and the speed that he kind of brings to the room.
then for me to add to a tight end room. So Furt more is a, uh, you know, he's my he's my fullback, and uh, but he's learned he's learned the tight end position, and I think he knows like our our plan for him is maybe a short yardage goal line uh, when we truly have you know need need a fullback or we go to 13 personnel, and it's really it's really two tight ends and a fullback, but it's going to be called 13 personnel. But either way, he's going to have value and, um, when it comes to the, those those situations, um, just because he'll run through you. And uh, so, you know, he might be the shortest and, and the lightest guy in the room, but he, he, he probably brings the biggest punch out of all of them just because he's fearless. When you first watched film of these guys and saw them, what, what surprised you the most? Was there anything that was better than you expected about the group? Yeah, I was surprised. And, and I didn't know much about the group when I first got here. Um, but it didn't take me long to, to, to realize really quickly, like, oh, man, we got some long athletic dudes. And that just fit you know, what we want to do naturally. And so that was, I was pleased by that. You know, obviously I feel like I have the best job in the world just because I have a, a real head coach and I get to work with my best friend who's the OC. And then all of a sudden I got a room full of talented dudes. So let's go get it. Uh, Paul just obviously kind of came from the quarterback perspective. You probably can uh, connect with him in that way. How have you seen him just kind of connect with you maybe um, having some sort of common bond? Uh, I, you know, it's fun to, to coach and teach Paul because he understands spacing concepts he's a, and he has some awareness of, of space in general. So he understands like the split rules. He understands what we're trying to do um, aiming point wise, right? He understands what the quarterback's looking. He understands timing. So, you know, teaching Paul is like teaching a quarterback just because obviously he's got a quarterback background. Mm -hmm. So he, um, you don't have to necessarily get into the nitty gritty of the reasons why he understands the reasons why. And you can actually tell him the reasons why and he not overthink it, right? Um, so. Uh, it's fun to, to, to get to have some dialogue with him just because he's got that background.